Hello, time travelers. Anybody out there who does training and has to prepare images for making embeddings or LoRa's checkpoints or Dream Booth or anything or whatever, I have this amazing tool that's going to save you hours of your life. Like, for example, I've got this folder with all these images here. Okay, I've got Earth and View set up to automatically open most image file types, like JPEG. I can hit the letter B. And this is set as files of type JPEG, and I can hit all, and then hit current look in folder, and then set this to PNG up here. Make sure I'm not doing anything else in advanced, and turn the advanced off, and go through all these steps. And that just does JPEGs. But then what about all these other file types? And you got like WEP? Okay, it shows them in here, but here's something frustrating. If I have these WEP, I hate WEP files, they're so dumb. Drop them in there. Well, the default configuration of Earth and View doesn't even let you view them. I just want to convert them all at once. All the different file types. It's so frustrating. This is my look of disapproval. First of all, let me explain to you why this is important. I'm going to show you something here. Here's... Uh, let's look at Rachel Riley. I have a recent Laura that I trained that's available for my Patreon subscribers if they want to download it. Alright, that's an example of an image generated with the Laura. Now, if you watch my previous videos, you know that training a Laura is not just simple as click and do a few settings and then run it. Every little thing you do changes it. Like, here's the training data folder. Let's open that up and take a look at something here. You've got the image file and the captions file and a temp file that Koya makes whenever it uses this file when, during training. Let's change my view to details so I can show you something. What? All right, you see how you've got the name? So the first thing is you get slightly better results in your training if your images are named the same as your instance prompt. What am I talking about? All right, now I have that same training from the image I showed you a minute ago loaded in Koya. If I go to folders, I name my lore with the instance prompt there, and I put a training comment with the instance prompt here. But where does it go? When you do the training, you go to utilities, WD14, and you put it in like this, like so. And this makes the, the caption files and puts this in every single caption file. And then your training folder has the instance prompt also in the name. Now if you look inside of one of the caption files, you see what I just put in Koya to, to make the caption files is right there. The next thing is you need all of your images to be the same extension. The reason why is because when it makes the caption files, let's say for example you have a Rachel Riley parentheses 1.png and also a Rachel Riley parentheses 1.jpg. That means the tags for both of those images will go into one single text file. But when you're downloading images off the internet, it's like a whole bunch of different file formats. And the thing that takes the most time is going through each one and making sure they're all PNGs. Now in this section of the video, I'm gonna demonstrate this thing that I've made and what it does. Example, I've got a folder of images of Kristen Bell and I've got my FFmpeg image converter loaded up here. I'm gonna use option F, which is change the working directory. You have to use this every time you load this thing. So hit option F and enter as it's asking for it. I'm just gonna copy paste this folder over, enter. And I've got a few options here, but I'm gonna skip to demonstrating converting all these images all at once. And this goes faster or slower depending on your CPU. So this is a CPU I have right here, Ryzen 7 5800X, just if you're curious. I did develop this on another computer and it ran significantly slower, but it's not like you have to sit there and babysit it. And it's not like you have to go through each file type and or like WP files like I was doing in the past, just dropping them all into GIMP and having it export each one as a PNG. Let me go to view and then details and then show you. View details. Whoop. See, they are all PNGs. All right, now in this section of the video, I'm gonna show you what you need to download and set up so you can have this thing. Go to my GitHub repo, which I have linked in the descriptables below, and look for Stable Diffusion Automatic 1111 Tools. If you've already downloaded it in the past, you're going to download it again because I've updated this. There was a bug in it that I fixed this week. So I'm gonna close this so I can demonstrate. I'm gonna delete the folder I have of it. You won't have that folder already if you're new to this, but go to code and then download zip. I have my browser set to ask me where to download every time, but you might have to move it or whatever later. Save. 
open up the zip and you can drag this right out of there. Or if you have WinRAR installed, you can just right click that and hit extract here. Now I'll open up the folder, it says Stable Diffusion Automatic 1111 Tools Main. And this is what you've got inside. Open up the FFmpeg image converter right here. And you're gonna need to leave this open for the next part. And what we need to do now is get FFmpeg.exe and put it in here. Now, if you've already installed FFmpeg on your computer for some other tool or whatever, I'm gonna show you first how to make a copy of that and put it in here. Hit Windows button R on your keyboard that brings up the run prompt. And if you don't have this in there, type CMD and press enter. Now you should have the command line window open. And I remember that I installed an AI tool and I put all my AI tools on the D drive. So I'm gonna hit D and then a colon and press enter. And then I'm gonna go CD AI stuff and then stable diffusion or whatever folder where you would have installed something. And I'm gonna put DIR slash B slash S and then FFmpeg.exe and press enter. So what this command does is directory listing, which does a search slash B means plain and S means search through all subfolders. And this command means look for this specific file. I'm gonna hit control C because I found it. I'm gonna move this over here. Whatever method you use to open command line to this folder, I like to do Windows button R, CMD, enter, move this down here, CD slash D, double quote, and copy paste the path down here. Yes, I know you can type CMD up here. Other people have told me in comments, but I don't like to do that for reasons I'm not gonna get into in this video. So now I've got these two command line opens. What I'm gonna do is type the word copy and then type a double quote and leave it just like that. And then drag my mouse like this. So I'm gonna copy this whole path with control C and then to paste it over here, just press right click on the mouse and press enter. This is one file copied. I can double check that I see it right here. All right, here's the next method if you don't have FFmpeg on your computer yet. Go to the download FFmpeg page, which I'll have linked in the description of what's it's below, obviously. And click the option for Windows, and you notice that the options are changing down here as I do that. Click that, and it scrolls down awkwardly, but then go back up and just hit this Windows Bills by Gian.dev. Scroll down now that you're on this guy's page, and you can download either one of these. I'm just gonna hit the essentials one and I'm gonna go into automatic 11.11 tools, FFmpeg image converter and hit save. Now, if you don't have your browser set to ask you where to download stuff, then you're gonna have to open your downloads folder and then go move it. I'll show you how to do it in Chrome since I'm in Chrome right now. From here, you press control J and it shows your download history. You find it right here, the three dots and then hit show in folder. And then you just move it or whatever you gotta do. In this case, I notice it's a dot seven zip file. Here's the download page for 7-Zip. If you have WinRAR or even Windows or try to open 7-Zip files, but every now and then in a rare scenario, they don't get the algorithm for 7-Zip right. And it doesn't make the file correctly when you extract it. So this is the most common one you're gonna wanna use right here. The download.exe for 64-bit Windows 64. You don't have to do anything special with the installer. Just run it and click next, 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 or whatever. So right click this, since it's a 7-Zip, and go over to 7-Zip and then extract here. And it makes this folder, and you don't need all this stuff, but you go into bin, and you want this ffmpeg.exe. You just move it to where it sits in the same folder with these scripts. All right, this is a section of the video where I demonstrate the different options and settings or whatever in this thing. It doesn't really have any settings except for change the working path, which is whatever folder that you're working in. All right, this is Allison Pill. This is a celebrity face that I plan on training at some point. And I put all of her stuff in a temp folder just to demonstrate this today in the video. I'm going to hit Alt-D to put my cursor up there in the address bar of File Explorer. Hit Control-C to copy the path. Go back to this thingy what's it tool that I made for you guys. Hit Option-F and press Enter. And right-click to paste and press Enter. And the first option is check for duplicate hashes. I was just thinking when I made this that sometimes I have to download a hundred pictures for a face that's really hard to train and I accidentally have duplicates. And it's the only method I could think to programmatically have it check for one of the ways, which is that multiple websites will have the same picture of a person and if you download them, even if they're different file names, they'll have the same hash. I wish I could do more ways to check if you have two of the same, but if I do this, which is option D, it says that I have two that have the same hash. And I did this as a test. I just took one of the files and copied it and then renamed it with PNG at the end, just to demonstrate this. But I've actually had this help me a couple times already when I was developing this tool. 
The next option is list the extensions in the folder. And it's looking for known image file types that are in this list right here. So if I hit option E, it goes through all of these extensions and tells you how many of each you have. So in this case, I have 14 JPEGs, 14 WEP, weird. I hate WPs, they're so weird. And one AVIF, AVIF file. I hate these even more. They're so dumb. They're so rare. And like, what the frick are you? And then PNGs, like those are my favorite because they're really good quality. I've got one of those. Total files, 30. That also helps you when you're trying to figure out, oh, how many did I download so far? And then you've got options one through nine, which is just to convert one extension at a time if that's all you want to do. So let's do four, for example. And there are no files in the extension with that folder, .jpeg. So let's try three. There is one conflict that might happen from renaming. And that's the thing I was showing you earlier that I made a copy of just to demonstrate. It will not let you run something if it's going to end up making two files of the same name. And then all of these do the same subroutine inside of the VB script, which is right here. Except this one does more. It runs the same subroutine in there, except it goes through every single one of these. So let's do that one now. And again, I've got this one where I copied a file and renamed it, and it's not gonna like that because that's a conflict. But you also have this case that does happen sometimes where you download two files with different extensions, but they got the same name. Even though it's got a capital letter right there, Windows still thinks it's the same name. So how do I fix that? I would put this over here and then resize Explorer like this and move it over. And then so let's say, let's just co copy this, go over here, Oops, I didn't mean to click that. Click right there. Hit Control F. I put your cursor up here. Ignore this. I was looking up a song earlier. What? Why can't I just clear this? I don't know. Stupid Windows. Paste that in. Oh, I've got two of them. Okay, I remember I made a copy of this and renamed it PNG. So let's shift delete that. Go away. And then let's look at the other one. Allison dash pill. Paste that in. All right. It's showing a bunch of them because a lot of these files start with Allison dash pill. So dot star uh it's it's not doing like older versions of windows used to do dot means that's the end of the file name anyways i can see them here's the avif one and here's the web p one all i did have to do is click either one of them and press f2 and then use the arrow keys on the keyboard and then let's let's just call this dash two i'm still in a search here i can close it like hitting that there we go or if i did not type cmd up here to break it I can hit alt left and alt right to go through the history back to where I was. So let's hit option P now. Now you're free to go put these on Burmy to resize them or you can do your work cropping them or you whatever you want to do. And now for the self promo section of the video, which I'm thinking of starting to call. Shut up and take my money. If you'd like to support the channel, there's a few ways to do it. On this repo that I just sent you guys to, you could scroll down and there's three ways to, to throw money at me right here. My Patreon, buy me a coffee is a good option for just a one time throw money at me. And then drop me a super chat on my YouTube videos. You can go into a comment on this video and give me a super chat because YouTube doesn't pay me that much. And if the, I don't meet the threshold of $100, I don't get a paycheck from them that month. And super chats help me get to that goal. Or you can go to my Patreon and join there for a low monthly rate and get lots of benefits that, you know, obviously that you can see on the screen there. Now I think I'm going to have to do what I call sometimes an awkward end screen. The end screen where I don't really plan. Um, hmm. Oh, I know. Okay. Since we're talking about preparing images to train, if you're thinking about training and embedding, people are still watching my old embeddings video from... Like almost a year ago you can click that right here and it's something you can do in automatic 1111 to train a textual inversion file or if you want to start learning how to train a lore and you don't know how yet start with this video and subscribe to the channel and you know there's the patreon thingy over there and tell me in the comments if this thing helped you out all right bye